Hello everybody and welcome to another GameReplays.org Tournament Gamecast. I'm your host, Insane Rabbi. Joining me today on the mic is my good friend Cap. What's up, Capitalist? Oh, not a whole lot. I just got finished watching the uh, EU Finals. Very exciting. I won't say anything about it, but it was it was a pretty intense game, so check that out. Oh, uh, no spoiler alerts? Come on now. <laughs> not this time. A little bit of action on top, actually. Glacius Pesty chasing down a D-Sham. He took a little bit of damage there. Uh, on the camera is Yawning Angel. Polly coming in. Real strong Yoda doing some work on Hellfire there. That's to be expected. Oops, I'm sorry. Maybe I shouldn't talk like that. But uh, Yoda, good job there. Putting on, what, three, 400 damage on that Soul Sealer before the fight even begins. Good microing by Hellfire69. Now, um, Cap, what do you think about these picks overall? Kind of interesting. We see a Predator on a team. We see, uh, you know, a Cursed after the nerf. Glacius Pesty Lane. I mean, overall, uh, how you feel? Um, you know, I got, I definitely got to feel that um, right now it looks like, um, you know, I definitely am favoring Loaded right now in their picks. Um, you, like you talked about the accursed nerf, you know, it definitely, you know, being able to nuke down accursed and just uh, chain stun him to death. Um, that that whole nerf is very, very important. Um, and and all around, just uh, I really feel really strongly, especially with this predator pick. I got to say, I'm I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I think it's going to go up very very well against this uh, against this team. So I don't know. We'll just have to see how uh, Transcendence hopes to uh, keep down that predator and how they uh, how they go up against the the monsters that are loaded. Now, in a lot of recent games, we have seen another team run a lot of predator due to his armor debuffing, and of course, magic immunity. Um, that would be Team XTV. Do you think maybe Loaded has been uh, has been smurfing some of those replays, smurfing some of those scrims? Oh, oh yeah, I'm sure they they totally they're 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 watching every game of ours. Actually, did we run <laughs> Predator against them? I think we did, but then again, we, we lost did. horribly. So, not really. Uh, we didn't do that bad against. Them. It was like 13-28. We still got 13 yeah. kills. I'm happy. <laughs> that that was actually like four out of five on Loaded. They didn't have to chew that game, which is a pretty big deal. But yeah. either way, back to the game. Uh, Soul Stealer mid versus Polly. Polly's, you know, quite a bit ahead in the EXP per minute. I mean, he's already level 3. Soul Stealer's still sitting at 2. And uh, it's been that way for quite some time. So, we have that. The Glacius Pesty top versus Predator D Sham seems to be uh, pretty even. We do have D Sham trying to counter ward now. The question is where are the wards for uh, the opposing team? Great ward spot by Merc there on top. Do you want to go ahead and talk to me about these the the way anti wards work and about all that sexiness that just went on on top lane? Oh yeah, definitely. That was a great play by Merc. Basically, uh, you have two different spots in order to counter that uh, that creep spawn, and basically there is uh, behind that little woods. There's a little spot, and then in the actual camp itself. And what Merc did was placed it a little bit farther back, so he has both vision of um, if the ward was behind the forest and on top of uh, if it's inside the forest he get, has vision uh, counter vision of that area and so he can clear out the ward but he also made sure not to block the spawn itself so you're going to see it three minutes it, it's going to spawn and on top of that um, I'm not exactly sure it might have just a little bit of, of um, uh, ward vision at that innate ward vision of that ramp it might have just a little bit I'm not sure if it does or not uh, it's hard to tell but it might I don't know well, either way, another thing, for those of you wondering why Merc laid that second ward, kind of an interesting counter ward, um, not a whole lot of people understand it, um, you actually, a, a lot of teams place the ward at that cliff where uh, Transcendence actually has placed it, that top, kind of the, the corner, I guess you would call it, the, the, I don't even know what that thing is shaped like, it's like shaped like Chile, the country of Chile or something, you know, that long, <laughs> shape. and Really, it's not the most effective ward spot. A lot of people don't realize that. Glacius actually coming in here. So is Pesty. They're going to try and take out this D-Sham. He's taking a lot of damage. Predator coming in on Glacius, but not going to be enough to turn it. Well done by Glacius and Radio Man uh, playing that Pestilence top. Uh, you know, a bit of an overstep by that Demented Shaman. He's way too far forward. If you can get slowed, iced, and then Pesty can sprint forward and stun you, you're pretty much dead as the squishiest hero in the game. So great awareness by Transcendence right there. Really uh, taking it to this load team. You, you can't be happy if you're loaded sitting there giving up FB um, against the Glacius lane. So, overall, um, back to that ward though, you can actually place the ward so it gives sight up the ramp in mid. Uh, so, in other words, if that Soul Stealer was on the, on the bottom, like right in the middle of the map, and then um, Polly was on top, up the, up the, not the cliff, but like the ramp, you don't have sight. 
but with a certain ward you can see the rune and give a little bit of sight over that ramp so it helps the the mid lane a little bit better and most of the time that's where really good teams are going to place their wards but it's so common and so so overdone that teams just excuse me started putting it on the cliff to the left and now it's almost become standard to put it on the cliff to the left so it, you know, it's it's a bunch of mind games going back and forth. Transcendence in this situation kind of got lucky, placing the ward on the chilly island, I'm calling it, and uh, <laughs> loaded, countering what would be the best mathematical ward for them. Uh, Predator coming in here, doing some work on this Glacius in back. The sun coming in, nice magic immune, and the leap on the Glacius. Are they going to be able to get Glacius? I think Pessy's trying to slow him down, and Glacius getting in with one HP. No, he's not. Dot going to kill him from Demented Shaman. Pestilence going to need to be very careful here. Great turnaround by this d Um or Dsham Pesty, Dsham Predator, excuse me. They really needed to get that counter kill after giving up FB, and they did. Uh, looks as though Hellbringer tried to gank in mid. I kind of missed that, though. Um, so right now, Yoda just kind of chilling there. Let's take a look at some individual stats, Cap. Anybody anybody standing out over here? I mean, it looks like you got your Yoda and your uh, UQT Tralfamador, sorry if I said that wrong, which is your Predator coming in at the highest XP per minute. But uh, gold, no one, no one's standing out too heavily here, except maybe Radio Man there uh, on Pestilence. Oh yeah, definitely. I actually, uh, um, I, w I would have to say I'm a little bit surprised that this uh, lane for Yoda is going qu uh, quite as well as as it has been. Especially, you know, uh, Polymog Priest being such a squishy hero. You know, going up against a Soul Stealer. You know, just out of sheer uh, uh, attack damage in and of itself, being able to CS very well. And then on top of that, him being able to throw those nukes in order to not only gain CS but also harass. I'm surprised that Yoda is actually doing as well as he is. Um, you know, just Transcendence uh, Hellfire not picking up the the greatest CS right now but hopefully he's going to be able to pick it up of course you know one of the best uh the soul sealer being one of the best heroes that can really just come back in the game you know uh anytime just you know farm for five minutes straight and just pick up you know six seven x uh between regular uh lane creeps and uh neutrals but up and top actually action going down predators just barely throwing magic immunity great job but they're going to go on d sham d sham easily going to go down here barely healing up but it's not going to be enough just trying to do a little bit of damage but predator doing a ton of damage trying to pick up the pesty kill but not getting it backing up great job missing that stun just just in time they actually turning around on Glacius, Glacius with no support from uh, Pestilence is going to be just fine though. Pred just going to go right back to farming. That was a, a very nice play by uh, Predator all around, just uh, throwing his magic immunity at the right times, backing up at the right times to dodge stuns. I'm really impressed right now by this Predator play. Yeah, great understanding of high level of play. You can't overcommit as a Predator. A lot of people just like to go in magic immune and just right click and let it, you know, just set it and forget it. They don't like to maneuver their hero at all or do anything when they're when they're playing Predator. They just like to leap in, Magic Immune, and get a kill. Well, you don't have any burst damage items. You don't have Insanitary, so you don't have, uh, if you do get this item, Elder Parasite, which I know some te uh, people like to get. Um, and it's obviously not a bad item on him. Uh, you know, it's situational. And here we go, actually, Soul Stealer throwing two nukes out, getting uh, about 100 gold on those, on those neutrals. I'm honestly not a fan of wasting... 150 mana just to kill those. Um, eh. Yeah, I think Solstu is better off just sitting in lane, using that, that mana to harass and maybe try and push Polly out of the lane, but oh well. Uh, as for top, as you said, Predator, just great awareness, great understanding of the cooldowns. Um, and that that's really mid. Uh, Hellbringer's invis. Thank you, Yawning. Excuse me. Um, Fuji Apple's trying to get a gank here on the Soul Stealer. He's got one of the Unholy Shackles. Polly's actually level 7, so there comes a nuke. Slow going out. Dot going out. Not going to be enough. Port Inc. mid. Good job by this Transcendence team, making sure that they're going to port to keep their carry alive. Port's actually being cancelled here. Um, Glacius being attacked on top by Predator. He went in doing some work on that Glacius, but he doesn't have enough mana to Magic Immune. He's going to be doing some work on Pestilence now, though. And it looks as though Glacius... Mmm... Not doing so hot on top. Another stun coming out. Good stun there, but he's gonna be careful. He's near a lot of creeps. If he was getting a heal bomb, yeah. Pestilence coming back in, throwing the ult out, doing some some extra hits. But Pesty still dotted, not gonna be able to flask up yet. Now he is. Glacius Pesty level four, level five. Predator level seven. Desham level five. Things are not looking good. Top action on bottom. I'm or mid. I'm sorry. I completely missed a Hellbringer doing work on Soul Stealer, but it's not gonna be enough. He's gonna pick up that kill, getting away with 150 HP. And we are sitting at three kills to one kill in favor of Transcendence.